With most of the south in Aegon's hands, the best chance to throw back the Conqueror now lay with the north, if we cared enough to try. Unlike our southern rivals, the Stark Kings of Winter didn't forge the north into one kingdom for glory or gold. There is little of either here, but to survive. Alone in Westeros, the north remembered when worse than dragons lay waste to armies. Thousands of years ago, the sun set on the realms of men and the long night began. A new race emerged from the ice and snow, the White Walkers. They demanded no crown, offered no terms, spared no life, and the dead marched with them. With humanity facing extinction, a Stark sought out the children of the forest, the most ancient beings in Westeros, and convinced them to ally with the men they'd once fought. Together, the two races pushed the walkers back into the land of always winter and sealed it off from the Seven Kingdoms with the Wall. 300 miles of ice, stone and earth rising nearly 700 feet tall. To guard it, they established the Night's Watch, a brotherhood sworn to defend the living from the dead, whose vows erase both titles and crimes. After the long night, the North tried to forget it belonged to a continent, perhaps through pride, perhaps through sheer ignorance. You never can tell with the North. But as news of Aegon's dragons spread, Torrenstar, the King of Winter, knew he couldn't forget Westeros any longer and summoned his lords to Winterfell. Many fools shrugged off the threat, while the rest placed wages on how long the South would take to burn. Torrens silenced them with a command to assemble their armies and descend from the north in force. As the kings of the Rock and the Reach burned on the field of fire, the greatest northern force since the Long Night crossed the Neck into the Riverlands. But when King Torren arrived at the Trident, he saw, on the opposing riverbank, the combined strength of all Aegon's conquered kingdoms, a force larger than Torren's own by half, and with three dragons. That night, King Torren called a conference of all his lords and advisors. Some wanted to fight and trust northern valor to carry the day and burn on the Triton. The wisest of them wanted to withdraw to Moat Kaelin, the fortress which had thrown back every southern invasion, and burn there. One suicidal lord even wanted to ambush Aegon's camp in the dark and kill the dragons as they slept, or at the very least, their riders. It's hard to tell what would have been his fate. Burning, beheading, dismemberment, perhaps all three. My ancestor listened to their counsel and in the morning crossed the trident under a flag of parley. Then King Torren of House Stark laid his ancient crown at Aegon's feet and was named Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North and the king who knelt. He had no choice, and thanks to him, our soldiers returned to their homes whole and unharmed. The swords that Aegon took from them were not twisted, burnt, or mangled. Yet, 